If you have a dream, don't just sit there. Gather courage to believe that you can succeed and leave no stone unturned to make it a reality. A very warm good morning to all my dear students. Today, we'll begin a new chapter from our Social Science 1 textbook. The name of the chapter is Public Administration. What is Public Administration? Public administration is public leadership of public affairs responsible for executive action. Public administration is like any other administration which is carried out in public interest. Public administration is the implementation of government policies. Public administration is a feature of all nations, whatever their system of government be. Within nations, public administration is practiced at the central, state and local levels. Thus, public administration can be broadly described as the development, implementation and study of branches of government policies. The history of public administration begins with the formation of state. Based on the differences in the form of government, we can find differences in public administration also. Today, public administration is often regarded as including some responsibility for determining the policies and programs of the governments. Specifically, it is the planning, organizing, directing, coordinating and controlling of government operations. For better, better public administration, we have well-structured bureaucracy. Governments are also bringing out timely reforms in administration. Right to information, right to service, etc. are such reforms. Public administration is the effective utilization of men and materials for the implementation of existing laws, government policies, programs and developmental projects. Public administration is concerned with the administration of the government. Governmental institutions are part of public administration as they function for the welfare of the people. A government will exist only if an administrative system exists. Name some government institutions around us and what are their functions. Primary health centers provide treatment facilities to people. Krishi Bhavan does the work of promoting agriculture and agricultural activities. Police station has been entrusted with the responsibility of maintaining law and order. And finally, the function of village office is to collect land tax from people. List out the changes in the objectives of public administration in monarchy and democracy. Differences in public administration can be found based on differences in the form of government like monarchy and democracy. In a monarchy, the interest of the monarch was the basis of public administration. But in a democracy, the interest of people was the basis of public administration. Democratic administration is more effective and efficient through public administration. Now, let us go through the significance of public administration. Firstly, the government tries to find solutions to various problems. Second one, ensuring the welfare of the people. Thirdly, providing goods and services to the people. And finally, forming new government policies and programs. So, firstly, formulating governmental policies, ensure welfare of the people, find out solutions to public issues, and finally provide goods and services. Gandhiji's concept of Grama Swaraj played an important role in the outlook of public administration. Many local government institutions were formed on this basis. Gandhiji's concept of Grama Swaraj means conversion of every village into a village self-rule where all the systems and facilities for a dignified living are available. Who should get the benefits of administration according to Gandhiji? Gandhiji wanted that the interests of all the people should be protected through public administration. But a large number of people in our society need special consideration and protection. Gandhiji also specified that public administration should consider, consider them specially and give protection. Moving to bureaucracy. 
Bureaucracy means a system of government in which most of the important decisions are taken by the state officials rather than by the elected representatives. In a bureaucracy, public administrative system from local level to the national level is constituted. Many employees are appointed for the day-to-day -day functioning of these institutions. The bureaucrats make the administrative system very active so that the services of government reach the public through them. These people who work under the public administrative system and administer the country together are known as bureaucracy. Here, bureaucrats are officials in a government department who carry out public administration services and implement them. A country can only develop when human and material resources are utilized to the maximum. Bureaucracy prepares plans for the best utilization of these resources scientifically and implements them effectively. Now, let us study the basic features of bureaucracy. There are five basic features of bureaucracy. They are, first one, hierarchical organization, second one, permanence, third one, appointment on the basis of qualification, fourth one, political neutrality, and fifth one as professionalism. So once again, which are the five basic features of bureaucracy? First one, hierarchical organization, second one, permanence, third one, appointment on the basis of qualification, Fourth one, political neutrality. And finally, fifth one as professionalism. Now moving on to the first one, hierarchical organization. Here, only one employee is at the top and the number increases at the lower levels. That is why it is known as hierarchical organization. Second one, permanence. People who are appointed under different governmental institutions continue in service till they retire. Third one, Appointment on the basis of qualification. The employees are recruited and appointed on the basis of their educational qualification. Fourth one, political neutrality. Whichever political party comes into power, the bureaucrats are responsible to implement the policies based on neutrality. Party interests should not reflect in their interests. Fifth one, professionalism. Every government employee should be skilled in their work. Moving on to bureaucracy in India. The first step for recruitment of employees to various departments of the government are issuing notification for the recruitment of employees to various departments. Secondly, persons are selected on the basis of merit after a screening test an interview and then appointed in different government offices. Thirdly, all the persons appointed in this way are a part of civil service in India. All the employees who work under the central and state government and employees working under public sector undertakings are a part of Indian civil service. Bureaucracy in India constitutes the professionals who are permanent and salaried employees that are a part of the government's executive organ. In a broader sense, bureaucracy consists of all the permanent government employees from the peons to the high-level public servants. Let us now learn the classification of India's civil service. They are All India Services, Central Services and State Services. So which are the three classifications? All India Services, Central Services and State Services. Moving on to All India Services. Persons are recruited at national level. Candidates are recruited by Union Public Service Commission, that is UPSC. Appointments are done in central or state services. For example, Indian Administrative Service and Indian Police Service. Moving on to Central Services. Here, persons are recruited at the national level. Appointments are in central government departments only. Say for example, Indian Foreign Service and Indian Railway Service. And moving on to state services, here candidates are recruited at state level. Appointments in the state government departments only. Example, Sales Tax Office. Let us study about UPSC and PSC. UPSC is Union Public Service Commission. Candidates to all India services and center services are recruited by UPSC. 
the chairman and the members of this commission are appointed by the president of india the upsc has various widespread mechanisms for the recruitment of candidates on the basis of their qualification psc is public service commission candidates at the state level are recruited by the public service commission the governor appoints the chairman and the members of the state public service commission upsc and the state public service commissions are called constitutional institutions as they are constituted on the basis of constitutional provisions hierarchical organization which is one of the main features of bureaucracy creates delay in taking decisions in administrative field so in order to provide better services easily the government has taken certain steps let us know the factors that affect the efficiency of public administration they are first one inefficiency of bureaucracy bureaucrats fail in providing good administrative services to the people second one corruption corruption includes giving or accepting bribes or inappropriate gifts double dealing under the table transactions manipulating elections diverting funds laundering money and defrauding investors third one political interference different political parties interfering in the matters of public administration affects the efficiency of public administration fourth one bribery bribery is offering something desirable or something of value in exchange for getting something in return fifth one shortage of employees if there is a shortage of employees the work remains incomplete which affects the efficiency of public administration and finally frequent transfers due to political interference or political interest the employees are transferred frequently and thus affecting the efficiency of public administration now let us study about administrative reforms in india government has taken many steps for increasing the efficiency of services and to provide these services to the people at proper time they are known as administrative reforms so what are administrative reforms government has taken many steps for increasing the efficiency of services and to provide these services to the people at proper time they are known as administrative reforms the main aim of administrative reforms is to make people administration friendly and efficient many administrative reform commission that is arc is the committee appointed by the government of india for giving recommendations for reviewing the public administration system in india the first arc was established on january 5th 1966 and was initially chaired by morarji desai the government constitutes administrative reform commissions at national level and state level the different administrative reforms are e governance right to information right to service central vigilance commission lokpal lok ayukta and ombudsman explain e governance and its benefits e governance is the use of electronic technology in administration in all the processes with the aim of enhancing government ability to address the needs of the general public e governance helps the government to obtain government services easily in a speedy manner say for example the single window system for admissions to higher secondary courses online applications for various scholarships are examples for e governance let us now go through the benefits of e governance first one people can get services with the help of information technology secondly people need not wait in government offices for services third one services offered by the government becomes speedy and less expensive fourth one efficiency and the quality of services in offices gets enhanced fifthly these facilities are now available in all government offices in kerala many akshaya centers provide such basic facilities people can also receive services of e governance at home with the spread of e literacy 
let us now know about RTI or right to information. RTI or right to information empowers every citizen to seek any information from the government, inspect any government documents and seek certified photocopies thereof. RTI is also defined as the right to be informed about the quality, quantity, capability, purity, standard as of goods and services as the case may be so as to protect the consumer against the unfair trade practices in the Consumer Protection Act of 1986. People got this opportunity under the Right to Information Act of 2005. The efforts of Mazdoor Kisan Shakti Sangathan of Rajasthan has led to the legislation of RTI Act that is the Right to Information Act. Many organizations and social activists help passing of the RTI of 2005 which ensures the right of all citizens of India to receive information. The main objective of this act are firstly to prevent corruption, secondly create responsibility and finally make the functioning of the government transparent. Let us now go through the working or functions of information commission. Information commissions are constituted at national and state levels to perform the functions under the right for information act. A chief information of commissioner and not more than 10 members work together to help the people. If the authority do not give or refuse to give the information or give wrong and unsatisfactory replies, the person can approach this information commission and can file an appeal. If the commission is convinced, a fine of Rs 250 can be imposed on the employee concerned till the information is given. Right to Service Act is helpful for the people to get the service they should obtain from the government offices. Discuss. Right to Service legislation are meant to reduce corruption among the government officials and to increase transparency and public accountability. Right to Service Act is a law which ensures services to the people. It also determines the time limit for every services given by the government office. If the deserved service is not given within this time limit, the responsible employee should pay a fine. An officer is appointed as per the Right to Service Act in every government office to give guidance and proper help to the applicants. Let us study about the institutions Lokpal and Lokayukta. Lokpal is an institution at the national level which helps to prevent corruption at administrative, bureaucratic and political levels. Lokpal has the power to register cases on issues of corruption against employees and public workers and can suggest necessary actions. Lok Ayukta is an institution which works at the state level to hear the corruption cases. Both Lokpal and Lok Ayukta follow judicial procedures. Take a note on Central Vigilance Commission. Central Vigilance Commission is the institution which works at the national level to prevent corruption which came into effect in 1964. The main work of this institution is to prevent corruption in the central government offices. The Central Vigilance Commissioner is the head of the Central Vigilance Commission. In every department, there will be a Chief Vigilance Officer. The duty of the Commission is to inquire in vigilance cases and take necessary actions. The state also has State Vigilance Commission which inquires into corruption in the state government offices. For doing their work, vigilance codes are constituted to track vigilance cases. What is the use of Ombudsman to the public? Ombudsman is an official who is charged with representing the interests of the public by investigating and addressing complaints of maladministration or a violation of rights. Elected representatives and bureaucrats are part of public administration. Complaints can be filed against their corruption, nepotism 
or financial misappropriation or negligence of duties. Here, nepotism means the practice among those with power or influence of favoring the relatives or friends, especially by giving them jobs. For this purpose, an ombudsman is constituted who is usually a retired judge of the High Court. People can directly approach the ombudsman with complaints. The ombudsman has the power to order anyone and can order inquiry and recommend actions. An ombudsman has the power in the banking sector to hear the complaints of clients and rectify them. That's all for today. Thank you. Stay home, stay safe.